Hi there, my name is Louis Taylor. I'm a composer and a producer based in Bristol. And today I'm doing a little video on the new Spitfire Audio Fractured Strings. And this is an amazing library. I'm going to show you a little demo that I've written. It's very simple and we're going to break down some of the elements and we can go through some of the features of this amazing library. So without further ado, here is the demo. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I had a lot of fun writing with this library and uh, using it in this composition. Obviously, the composition is very straightforward and simple. You know, there's not a whole lot going on here. But I think that I wanted to focus more on the subtle harmony uh, shifts that were happening. And the um, I wanted to highlight the features of the uh, string library that kind of play those amazing nice chords that are really open, um, shift to nice harmonies and have a really nice sort of reverb tail. So I think a lot of the point of this library is to kind of use these gestures and these sort of short notes, these shorter um, sort of gestures and, and, and that kind of thing sparingly throughout a composition or you can create a composition a bit like this where it's a little bit more um, ambient shall we say. But but even then, it, there's there's still quite a lot to be unpacked here. So to start with, the first thing you hear actually isn't fractured strings. I actually picked up another library by Spitfire called Fragile Strings um, Evolutions, which is a which is a different library, obviously. Uh, I'll just show you that. It's got a very lovely UI, um, custom made by Spitfire. It's got this kind of nice Evo grid plug board type thing going on here. And the idea is that it just uh, you hold down notes and you can change you know the the parameters of what happens, but essentially it just evolves over a time and it brings a new sort of depth to the 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 uh, instrument that you're using, um, which is nice to use as a sort of pedal note. But I also felt that um, to kind of highlight certain harmonic moments, using just a basic um, pad type patch on this violin gesture sounds really nice. So I'll just show you what that sounds like. got some nice harmonics that kind of creep in and out of there which I really really like so um, next up we've got moving on now essentially to the fractured strings so starts off with these really beautiful violin rotations and by the way I barely even touched the surface with this library and what it can actually really do um, but I'm still learning the library and I thought I'd make a demo of what I've learned so far but I'm definitely going to be adding a lot of these sounds to my template because they're so useful and they sound so realistic so um, these rotations are essentially, you can change the interval, um, or you can do it in a scale where you can essentially set the scale that you want here. Um, obviously, you've got all the microphone positions and everything that you would normally get in one of these amazing plugins. Um, and essentially, you know, if I wanted to do augmented fourths, then it would stick to that, but I've set it to a C minor scale, pretty much. Um, yeah, exactly. And uh, it just does these really nice um, little rotations, I suppose, as they call them. So let's have a listen to what they sound like.
really beautiful sort of glacier like sounds i really just love the uh the vibe that these these sounds give off so obviously you've got these nice chords and the one of the, my favorite parts of this library is what's coming up next which is the gestures so gestures are essentially um they're, they're, they're essentially a, a short harmonic shift, basically. So if I play one note, it, it's programmed in this sort of grid here to just go from one note to the next. And there is a setting that you can set it to where it just does the same note. So it always plays two, but it could either be, for example, this um, A sharp four up here. Whoops. Uh, where is it? Why is that not working? There we go. So I think it's... So do you hear it has that like little rebo basically? Um and the same with the C. Which is lovely. But if I move down to the G here, it has that. So you can create really nice uh, harmonies. And actually it's a really nice inspiring way to come up with some harmonies that you wouldn't have done necessarily and think, actually that sounds really good. I would not have come up with that. If you just do randomize, it comes up with some great stuff. Um so I don't know if you noticed, but this piece is heavily inspired by a lot of harmonies that I love by Bernard Herrmann, which, uh, if you don't know him, he's a fantastic 20th century composer, did things like Psycho, Vertigo, all that kind of Hitchcock um, stuff, and he's brilliant, check him out, um, but uh, I really like the harmonies that he uses, so I, I start off with harmonies, I think it's this one. Just these beautiful cello gestures, basically, that, that really just push that that sound through. And and to me, because each one of these sounds that I'm using here, they're all individually recorded. It's not like you're having to string together and like intensely program legatos. They sound real because they actually are real recordings of each thing. So it's, an, it's a really nice way to bring a bit of life to the piece because it's not like you're actually using sort of um, synthesized sounds or sounds that are being programmed together. These sounds are fully recorded in that way and and it would sound just like that if you took the original recordings of the cellists playing that and put it in there like that so it's really really nice and obviously realistic for that moving forward we've got uh I, basically I, I just essentially um stack these chords on top of each other so if we just listen to the I've also got quite a lot of production happening on this, so I might just turn all that off so you can hear it as it sounds. But yeah, it's got some really nice built-in reverb, um, so that's really nice too, and all the microphone positions are just stunning. Um, now, moving on, we have a very similar um, gesture uh, from the violins, which I really like to use on top of the celli to kind of add depth or if you didn't want the um, full range of everything to have things going on a bit higher up, which is really nice. And that's the thing with this library. It's basically only um, violin. It is literally violins and celli and that's it. And it's a very few amount of instruments, like eight or something like that. So it's really, really nice uh, ensemble size, very intimate. Um, it's worth watching the walkthrough by Paul Thompson. It, that's what sold it to me to be honest. So it's worth watching that. But um, the only thing that bothers me a little bit is these gestures on the violin. They they don't quite sync up with the uh, celli one, so you have to kind of time them a little bit, which is why some of these don't look quite right. So if you just look at this violin, for example, it's very similar, but I just have to time it a bit afterwards. Obviously that sounds very nice too. Um, now, the next thing that comes up here is we have these really nice um, declamatory shorts. And I've got them on a slightly harsher setting here, um, which is uh, really nice to, to use as well. And there's, there's this really harsh one, which is like Sol, sol uh, Ponticello. But this one's kind of just like a bit of a mix. And then you have a normal one here. So I use both of these in my in my uh, piece, but to start with, we have these. And now for one of my favourite moments in the piece, we have a gesture in the celli, like before. And then the same again, but... Higher up and a slightly different harmony, which is why I've got it on a different um, instrument track here. But one of my favourite features of this, and you really do have to use these sparingly, but when you do use them, they add an 
unreal amount of realism, ironically. So it's 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 kind of hard to grasp by just uh, trying to say that. But if you just listen, you'll understand. Because it really is literally just some violins going, and in a harmony, the recordings are all harmonically done. The gestures are changing and varying throughout each note and there's a perfect amount of realistic vibrato on there which just happens from the recording that's one of the things that's hardest to achieve with sampling in my opinion uh, based on what i've seen people doing and different spitfire libraries just kind of lacking in in that kind of vibrato but yeah it, these are no example of lacking they are perfect so if you listen to this other one just sounds amazing um truly does so moving on from that, we have some more declamatory shorts in a different, uh, they're more mild, I've called them. And I've doubled it with the cellis, put them slightly to the left. Um, and by the way, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm in 3-4 here now. So I just did a quick change. And I don't know why I did that, other than the fact that it felt right, to be honest. Um, it just felt like the right thing to do to change the 3-4 at that point. I don't know what it was, but the timings just felt, felt like that. So um, we just have these really nice... So that's beautiful. And then we have another harmony from the from the celli. And we've got the uh, a little bit of support there. These are a little bit slow release wise, so it's kind of like an attack. The uh, the attack of the sound that is the samples just don't trigger that quickly, so I couldn't change the harmony, so I kind of just had to start that one and then stop it and leave it to the other instruments. But we've also got the uh, uh, some more gestures up here from the violins. And then finally, to end the piece, we have the um, pedal that's been happening the whole time in the Gestures Evo. Uh, sorry, in the uh, Fragile Strings Evo. And here we have the Celli uh, statements, and it's just literally a repeated note on the, I think it's on the lowest C. And that's obviously all controlled by modulation, and there is quite a lot of um, velocity controlled with this library too. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks. It's only a short one, but uh, I really wanted to showcase this demo and the use that this library has in these sorts of pieces. So thanks so much for watching. Um, please do like, subscribe, share, comment, all of that. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.